Okay, hi everyone and welcome to another of my videos. Uh, my name is Ian Middleton, I'm a travel and landscape photographer and you can find me on my website ianmiddletonphotography.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Ian Middleton Photography. Now in this video I'm going to show you uh, how I processed two of the photos that I took at the Church of St. Thomas when the full moon was rising behind the mountains next or behind the church. This is part two to the the vlog that I did on photographing this moment and this church. So if you haven't watched that then uh, please pop over and watch that. I'll put a link to it up here now. Okay but uh, just to recap uh, this was a once a year event where the full moon rises behind the the mountains or rises over the mountain peaks that sit behind the church of saint thomas in slovenia this is an iconic view uh, many of you probably know this if you've watched my videos or you've been there yourself if you haven't again check out my videos and get yourself there because this is a fantastic location and as you can see a fantastic view uh, but once a year, while many most the, most of the time this is a morning shot, this uh, is best shot at sunrise for multiple reasons. Uh, but once a year, the moon rises just in the right position that you can see here. Uh, but it happens at sunset, not at sunrise. Uh, so uh, it's probably it's actually the first time I've visited this location for at sunset. But once a year, in this case it was in January, but around about this time the moon rises uh, just at the point of sunset or around the point of sunset. And in this case, it was perfectly timed. The moon actually rose uh, about quarter past four, but of course I estimated that it would take another 15 to 20 minutes to come up above the mountains. And the sunset was actually at 4.35. So, in actual fact the moon rose above the mountains just at the point of sunset which was perfect as you can see so we had the sunset colors the sky was still quite bright which um, had the effect of diffusing the intensity of the moon if you photograph the moon uh, at dusk or as the darker basically the darker the sky gets the brighter the moon is in contrast to the sky and of course to the foreground and then it's very hard to capture it in one shot. But in this case, when it rises at the point of sunrise, sunset or sunrise, if it ac actually happens, but uh, if it rises at the point of sunset, then the sky is still very bright. The land, the foreground and everything is still quite bright. So it was perfect. And what happened here, of course, the balance between the sky, the moon and the foreground was just right. And it meant that I could capture it in one shot, especially here, this photo you're looking at now. Also, there was, it was very clear, it was perfectly clear, there wasn't a cloud to be seen. But there was a lot of haze over the mountains, as you can see by this photo. Now, when I took the shot, in the vlog I, I told you how I put a polarizer on. Now when you're shooting hazy scenes a polarizer is essential. You cannot replicate this in post-processing Photoshop or anything else. So it's essential that you put a polarizer on because polarizer helps then to cut out the haze and the polarizer then brought out the detail and helped me capture the detail on the mountain peaks as well and more obviously more of the detail in the foreground but in particular it helps to bring out the detail in the mountain peaks so it was essential that you use a uh, polarizer to help cut through the haze because this is a very distant shot actually I used a telephoto lens for this and you can see that I shot this particular one well it was at a hundred millimeters so it wasn't an extreme focal length uh, the reason for that was the, as you can see the moon the distance between the moon and the church it was quite wide so I had to pull back quite a lot to get everything in 
and uh, so I actually shot this at 100 mil. But still, it's these mountains are quite far, so there's a lot of haze in the distance. So the polarizer helped to cut through that. But of course, we can do more when processing the photo, especially if we've shot in RAW, which of course I have, and as always, I highly recommend that you all shoot in RAW. Uh, what I've done here is I've opened the RAW file in Adobe Camera RAW uh, within Photoshop, and I'm also going to show you how I'd use the dehaze tool to to dehaze the scene more and bring out some of the contrast and the detail that is lacking in the RAW file as a result of of the haze. So this photo, as you can see up here by the histogram, is perfectly exposed. There's no clipping. It's not, nothing is pushed off the edge. So the highlights are not burned out. Same here on the left. Yeah, there are no shadows without detail. Okay. Now, one way to, now one way to double check this, you can see up here, you've got your highlight clipping warning. If this is not red, then your highlights are not clipped. Same down here, your shadow clipping warning. If this is not red, then your shadows are not clipped. Okay. You can, if you click this, you can see that there's no red warning triangle. Okay. So the first thing to do, because this is a low contrast scene because of all the haze, and as you can see here, you've got a gap at the end on the shadow end of the histogram. And this is basically telling you that from here to the very end, there's no information. So it means that there are no deep shadows at that end. So one way we can boost the contrast, first of all, on this scene, is to pull back our blacks here. Quite simply like this. That helps to add an extra little touch of contrast. Now, one little tip, uh, one little tip for you when you're doing this, you can hold down the Alt key, and then when you click the slider, if the whole screen is white, that means there are no clipped shadows. If we pull this back a bit more, you'll start to see what happens. Now you can see that we've got a yellow warning triangle up there, but also down the bottom here, these areas in blue and cyan are indicating the areas where your shadows are clipped. So just simply, you can pull this back to the point where you don't get any clipping. There you go. Now you see that we've got white canvas again and the yellow warning triangle has disappeared. Okay, that's the first step. Next step, I'll just add a touch of contrast. Okay, and now I'm going to use the highlights tool because I want to bring back some of the highlights over here and in particular on the moon. Okay, so I'll pull this slider right back. Okay, straight away you can see the difference here. If we zoom into that, yeah, straight away you can see that we've brought back a lot of the detail in this moon. If we undo that, you can see the difference. See? There you go. Yeah, a huge difference already. Okay. Now, the dehaze tool. This is the one we especially want for a scene like this. Now, you have to be careful not to overdo the dehaze tool because it can look quite nasty. Now, if I use it here, 
I'm going to affect the overall image. So I want to be a bit reserved here. So I'm going to do maybe just a little bit here. About 10. That will do here. I'll tweak the clarity tool to bring out some clarity, especially over the church here. And I'll tweak the vibrance a touch. I rarely touch the saturation slider and I'm definitely not going to in this case. I don't want to make this uh, look too unnatural. It was a hazy scene. The sunset itself was really nice but it was very subtle soft colors so I don't want to make it look like too vibrant or over the top. Okay now the next stage I'm gonna work on the sky and also the mountain tops in particular. I don't want to do anything more down here so uh, I want to go to this graduated filter tool and set my graduation. If I hold down the shift key when I set my graduation point then it will keep everything straight. Okay, I want a very soft graduation here, otherwise it's going to look obvious and unnatural. I also want to start my graduation point ideally around about here, so I'm working everything I do will affect the top here. Again, I'll first of all pull back my highlights tool. Okay and I can also pull back my exposure a bit maybe not too much because I quite like how that sky is very bright just a teeny tiny touch and the dehaze tool. I can use the dehaze tool here but in this case I'm only going to affect the top here and this section here on a gradual basis and everything underneath would not be affected. There we go. That has really brought out the sky and the mountain tops and everything nicely using that tool. Okay, let's go back. Now I got my shadow clipping warning coming up just a touch. So I can, in order to find out where that is, uh, I can click the blacks and hold down my alt key. And there I can see those areas in cyan. Uh, this is not too much to worry about, tiny little specks. That just means that those little specks are completely black with no detail. But that's okay, I think. So that's about it for this photo. I'll open this in Photoshop and do a touch more work. But before I do that, let's look at the next one. Now in the video, you saw that uh, I basically said that I'm going to run off further down the road to get a different perspective. And the reason I did that was when the moon rose here there's quite a bit of separation between the moon and the church. Of course as the moon started to rise higher the moon rose off to the right which increased that separation. Now one way you can move objects closer together is simply by moving yourself. It's all about where you stand in relation to the objects that you're trying to place within your frame. And um, so by moving off to the left down the road, only I only went off about maybe two, three hundred meters. But by doing that, I actually closed the gap between the moon and the church, as you're going to see here. There we go. So as the moon rose off there, I moved around and I moved the two closer together. But by this time, the moon was up high and it was also starting to get dark now so it was a good maybe 20-30 minutes 
after sunset already so it was already getting dark. Now you can see in this photo that I exposed for the moon. Now you can see my foreground and everywhere else is, is getting very dark now. So in this case I did a some exposure bracketing. I took one exposure exposed to the right here to really ensure that I captured the the detail in the foreground and the shadow areas but as a result my sky is very bright and my moon is very bright and although it may look burned out it's actually not so if we look up here on our histogram you can see that there's there's no clipping warning okay there's a slight little uh, little clipping bit here uh, but again we can check where that is by simply going to our whites clicking on our white slider holding down the alt key and you can see that that's the moon but even then you can see that the moon is not totally burnt out there is some detail there those black areas are the detail so the image is although it's pushed to the right it's not overexposed and the and the uh, highlights are not burned out so we can work with this but I I took another one just to ensure that I got the detail in case I needed to exposure blend but I'm going to work on this one first and see if we can bring back the detail or not okay <clears throat> so again first thing I'm going to do is uh, deal with my blacks just to about there so there we've dealt with that and again I'll just tweak the contrast a touch I'll pull back the highlights tool here okay so already that's pulled back some of the detail in the sky yeah we can already see we've pulled back a lot of the detail in the moon here let's undo that and you can see yeah so although the detail is there it's very faint because it's very bright so by pulling back the highlights tool we deal with that okay so it's pulled back quite a lot of the detail although it's still quite faint but then the overall the moon is quite bright anyway so and again as we did before some clarity dehaze tool overall touch of vibrance and again to our sky okay often when you've used this tool you'll find that any adjustments you made they seem to stay so I'll always make sure that I put all the sliders back to zero okay. and again set my graduation point hold down the shift key and first of all again highlights pull them back And in this case, I'm probably going to pull the exposure back a bit more. Now this works well because by this time it was already starting to get quite dark. And um, the moon itself was quite bright, the sky was dark so this suits this image well it was already quite far past sunset again dehaze tool
Let's zoom in on that. Have a look. How does that look? Now we've really brought back the detail in the moon here. Uh, everything has been recovered, so I don't need to use that other exposure that I took. Let's just tweak that dehaze a bit more. I don't know. Just I think that looks about right. Now again, yeah, we've got our uh, shadow clipping warning triangle illuminating. We'll just check that. Again, I think it's the same as before. Just that little bit up there at the top corner, but that's okay. That's not a big problem. I'm going to open both of these in Photoshop. There we go. And here I just make a, uh, a few final finishing touches. Again, I use the Highlights tool in Photoshop because it's a bit more powerful than it is in Adobe Camera Raw. There, you can see, brought back again more detail in the sky over those mountain peaks in particular. Just a touch more. That's about right. <coughs> and I use the curves tool just to tweak the overall contrast on the scene. That's about it. That's good. I check my levels again to make sure everything is within the histogram. Okay, I've got no spikes either end, so everything is perfect. Same on this one. Highlight tool. Lovely. Curves. Now I'll probably pull this down a touch more because this is quite a moody, dark scene, so uh, I'll add more contrast to this scene. Nice. And there you have it. That's how I process these two. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful. And as I said, if you haven't seen the, the vlog where I photographed this moment, then please pop over and check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. I'll also put a link down in the description uh, to my article on how you can find this location. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos and my future videos. Thanks again for watching.